So today I want to show you how you can build canvas slash artifact view for your chat application. If you ever used ChatGPT or Claude and you asked it to write some long document, you probably noticed that it's create this view where you can see the content separately from the chat. And today I want to show you how you can actually build this. If we wait for some, some amount of time, uh, it will stream separately uh, into this separate component and not into the chat itself. And I'm going to show you how you can build this. So let's get into it. But first, let me walk you through the high overview of what we're going to build. Let's go from the left to right. User sends a request to API, sends a message to API to create a document. Then we're sending this uh, request to AI. AI then decides whether or not we want to create uh, a document. So we have a separate tool create a document tool with its own AI inside. So what we're doing inside of this tool is that we're getting all the context from this conversation. We are, and we're passing this context, uh, to content writer. And then we're separately, this is important. We're separately streaming the content of this or stream of this, uh, AI as it writes the content back to the API and the API streams it back to the user. And here we are sending different states of uh, the content writer to the API. So it could be like loading, streaming, and sending the content title and everything back to the API and the API sends it back to the client and we're displaying uh, this exact document on the right side as it's uh, streaming the content back to the client. So here's our API layer. As you can see, we're getting messages from our request JSON. And I'm using, of course, uh, AI SDK here because I'm TypeScript head and I really like them. But you can use whatever you want, uh, but I recommend using them. So here we're defining create UI message stream. This allows us to send custom data to the client, not only like stream text, but we can also stream different parts, um, different um, custom content, uh, statuses, loading states, stuff like this. Inside, we're defining the stream text. Uh, this is our like core agent that is going to call different tools. We're defining that we're going to use Gemini model. We're converting UI messages uh, into the model messages, defining the prompt. And here we're defining our tool. And here we are defining our tool and we're passing writer to this tool call. Writer allows us to send different custom parts to the front end. Uh, here we're defining our tool as a function and returning the tool itself. This allows us to pass through the writer itself. We're defining the name of the tool, description of the tool, input what it should input. Uh, in our case, it's going to input the title of the document, but also because Current application is quite simple. We're just creating text documents, but you can imagine you want to create, for example, and trigger code generation or for example, spreadsheet generation. And you can do it by implementing some kind of kind enum here. And you can define it like this. And it could be code, for example, it could be text, it could be spreadsheet, it could be anything. And based on that kind, you can, uh, trigger, <clears throat> you can trigger different parts of the workflow and create different types of the document. And on the front end as well, you can display different types of UIs based on the kind, of course. And this output schema, we're defining the string here in execute function, we're getting our input, which is, uh, this object, uh, we're also getting our messages. Uh, so here we're getting all the messages, uh, from the context that are being used in the context of our like parent AI, and we're passing them into the messages. We don't need to convert them into model messages because they're already model messages. And we're also passing the title that AI has predefined for us. We're telling this nested AI that creates the document content that it should output the markdown with headings and just the usual stuff. Then we're using our writer. So here we defined our stream text. We're getting stream 
right here. I think iterable stream that we can that we are going to use later. Here we are defining our writer write, which allows us to actually stream custom data to the front end. Right from here, we passed our writer through this function, and we're um, triggering this writer write. This allows us to write custom data to the front end. And you can also, because we are using types here, and because I have defined the type of my message, here I can show you at the bottom of this file, we have defined our own custom UI message, um, which we imported from AI SDK, from AI package. And here we're defining UI messages where the first one is metadata, then data parts, like custom data that you want to share to the front end. And then we have tools. For now, I defined it as any because I don't need it. But you can define it um, as you, your tools by inferring them as well. Here in my custom data types, we're defining create document. So this is the kind of custom part that I, I'm going to send to the front end. Here I'm defining that this part has multiple different statuses. It could be processing. Processing is basically before AI started to stream data. Then we have streaming, success, and error. Then we have our custom content that is going to be streamed to the front end. And we have our title that is predefined by AI when it's um, triggering the tool call. And as you can see, we're using this type here and we're using this data types right here in custom UI messages, which allows us to have writer know about these types. So by defining this uh, writer type, UI message stream writer, and in generics passing our message type, it allows us to know that we have multiple different, different like custom data, data types. For example, here we have many, many different data types that we can write to. Um, but we're interested in data create document. And because it's all type safe, all the statuses, all the content and title is also type safe. So here we have all our uh, statuses as well. After that, we're defining full content string. This allows us to then, when we're iterating over the text stream, which we got from the stream text right here, this allows us to append each chunk into the string and chunk could be one token or it could be like um, a bunch of tokens, a bunch of words. And after that, we are defining again our writer and we're writing again our data create document with ID. Also very important that you have to define the unique ID for this, um, for each specific part. So we're defining this document by using generate ID function and we're passing it right here into every writer. After that, of course, we're defining the data. We're setting status to streaming and we're setting the content um, to full content. And as you can imagine it's going to stream and append, append the content of the chunk into the content. And then this updated like string is going to be like rendered on the front end. I'm going to show you so like this. Is going to stream chunk by chunk by appending the string into the by appending chunk into the string. After that, once we done iterating over the stream and stream is done, then we are setting the data status to success. Right here again, we're triggering type there uh, data create document. We're defining the data with the status success. And we're giving it the full content and the title. And after that, we're returning the string with um, XML tag, create a document where we're defining the ID of the document. And inside of this uh, tags, we're defining the full content and we're just putting, passing through this whole document content. But you can imagine that maybe you don't want to do this because it's going to be a lot to put into the context, especially if the document is quite large. And maybe you want to build the whole agentic workflow around this by defining different tools to first uh, saving the content itself and then having tools in AI 
separate tools to like get document content uh, and stuff like this. And I'm going to show you why we actually need to do this right now and just simpl simplifies our life. And if we scroll back to the top of this file where we're, where we have defined the stream, our main AI that triggers the tool, we're getting this result, which is uh, a stream. And we're calling writer.merge um, result.ui message stream. Merge just allows us to merge multiple streams into one stream. Um, yeah, that's what it does. So basically we have, this is a, like a stream and we have another stream, which is this, and we're just merging them together. And after that, we're calling create UI message stream response, where we're passing this stream right here that we have defined. And that's it for the backend. We have our AI with a tool that can create documents. Um, inside of this tool, we have another AI that creates the content of the document based on the context of the parent AI. And this AI streams back all the content that it generates back to the front end through by using the writer API. And that's pretty much it. Let's go to the front end. I'm going to show you how it works. So here's our page. It's this one chat page. Um, this one, we have basically three components and that's all we have chat panel, which is just this chat. Then we have our document, which is the document. And then we have the provider itself. We need this provider because we have multiple components that consumes the same, uh, chat state. And we don't want to pass, we don't want to pass each individual method of the chat through the provider because it can get quite, uh, annoying to do so. What we're doing instead is that we're defining the create chat function, which uh, calls the new chat class. And you can define here. It, it's basically the same as you would, uh, write the chat by doing this. Use chat. And you have here all the options uh, that you have, basically the same options here. So we're creating this chat into the state itself. Um, this just allows us to clean it if we need to. And we're passing and defining our context here, chat, and we're passing our custom message. This allows us to have all our TypeScript things to happen. So we're passing our chat into the provider and then we're going to consume it. And I'm going to show you how we can do it. Let's go to, um, let's start with the chat panel because there, all we need to do is to show the card. So let's, uh, clipboard, write the poem. We need to render this card right here. So here in this chat panel, as usual, you just, we, we have our chat. We're getting our chat from this shared context. We're getting our chat and passing it just like this. Uh, chat use chat has this chat, um, object that you can pass. And by doing this, uh, this now is going to share all the messages between your components. So if, uh, somewhere, for example, in document panel, I'm going to define this chat and use this chat. It's going to have all the same messages as for example, this, uh, chat panel. After that, we're getting our messages and send message function. Um, we're sending message as usual, as you would do in the chat. Uh, and we're rendering our messages here. If the role is assistant, uh, then we're going through parts here. We're switch casing over all the parts, all the part types. And here we have our data create a document, this custom data type that we have defined on the backend, but because we were using the types, the same shared types, uh, we can access it in a type safe way. And we're going to have all the type safety of the title status here as well. And we're defining our document card. We're passing again, our title and status here. So right here, we're getting our function set open document and open document ID. We're handling the, we have a handler when user clicks on the card and we're setting this into the state. Okay. Now let's look at document on the right side on the document panel, document panel. Here again, we're getting 
open document ID and all the context from our shared context. We're putting this chat into our use chat hook. We're getting messages and send message. And here we're getting our opened document. So what we're doing here basically is we're going through all the messages, all the parts, and we're trying to find the document part with the ID that matches our open document ID. Uh, and based on that, we're getting our custom data type with the, again, with the type safety. And based on that, if we have that, we can actually show it. So for example, here we're showing the status, the title of the document, and here we're streaming the content. And here again, we're using response from AI elements, which also allows us to simplify our lives when we're rendering markdown content, because this could be quite, un quite annoying. Here as well, and I forgot to show you, actually we have the logic of selecting text in the document and ask it to change it. I haven't implemented the change and update the document function. Uh, and if I will do it and ask it to, for example, remove this, it most likely will just create a new document or refuse to do this at all. Let's see. Yeah, uh, create a new one. And so it, because it has all the context, Again, it can actually do that. It will now write the content without this selected um, text from from this document. Or at least I hope it won't do it. It will do it. I believe I selected this one. Yeah, it has removed it. Also, I forgot to mention is that when we're applying, so here if I select the text and I click apply, it will trigger this function, which just sends a message with the, select, with the selected text, but also we are sending the metadata with this message, which is open document ID. We need this to pass to AI. Um, let me show you. To pass to AI, for AI to know which document is currently is like being used or is, yeah, it's currently is being used by the user. <clears throat> we're getting it uh, by getting the last message um, and getting the metadata document ID. And if you remember, we have defined it actually right here in UI message as a metadata. And because of that, we have all the type safety in the world. But also another way of doing it, you can pass this open document as a body and not, with, not sending it with each message. And maybe that's even probably the right way to do it, but I'm not sure. I did it this way just to experiment with things. And by providing current document ID to AI, AI now actually knows which document we're talking about when we're sending uh, changes to it, right? And there you have it. I'm going to leave the repo of this project in the description. Uh, if you found this helpful, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.